while you may be chasing that next legendary weapon or gear upgrade. Underneath it all is a system so important to the Outriders experience that we decided it was worth its own video, mods. Hey there friends, it's Livid here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming. And today we're diving back into Outriders and highlighting some of the best weapon mods you want to hunt for at launch. Outriders does a lot of things right, and one of them is that the game really does shower you with loot. Even with that in mind, I see comment after comment about things like, what's the point in farming legendaries now? What's the point in farming weapons and armor at all? They're just going to be obsolete. And all around general misconceptions about the crafting and modding system in the game. Now if you don't understand these at a fundamental level, you may be throwing away weapons and gear incredibly beneficial to you. Which is why we're going to start with the basics. If you've already got an understanding for the mods, feel free to skip ahead using the chapters below. In Outriders, every player has a mod library they are constantly building. We just can't access it in the demo. But you can see if a mod is already unlocked in your library. If you hover over a weapon like this, you'll see next to the mod an almost window looking icon will be displayed. If that icon is showing, it means that that character currently has that mod unlocked in their mod library. If you don't see that, well, then that's a mod you need to get by dismantling that piece of gear or another with that same mod. Unfortunately, it seems like these mod libraries don't appear to be shared between characters, meaning you will need to unlock each one on each character. The good news, however, is once you unlock a mod in your library, you have infinite use to craft it on whatever gear you want, provided you have the resources to do so. If you go to disassemble an item for its mod, to make sure you actually receive this mod, you can hover over the dismantle mark button and it will pop up telling you exactly what you will receive from dismantling that item or group of items. You may also come across a stacked red icon next to a mod at times. And what this means is either this is the same mod you already have slotted in this slot or elsewhere. The reason this is important is because as far as we know, mods of the same type do not stack. So that's a nice UI element to help you out as you build your character. Now, as of this recording during the demo, we do not have access to the crafting system that will be present in the main game but there are a few tips that we think you should know. Even if you are just chasing legendaries for their exclusive tier 3 mods, I'd hold off on dismantling them until the game launches. The reason for this is dismantle legendaries reward titanium, a rare ore that we are capped at 10 in the demo, but is a core resource used to improve items to epic rarity and for leveling your items as you progress. Now these come from tough enemies as well as disassembled epics and legendaries. So if you want to hit the launch of Outriders running with a ton of resources beyond what the demo caps us at, that would be my suggestion. Now the other thing I'd pay attention to are shards. Now we aren't really capped on these being collected, whereas scrap, leather, iron, and titanium we are. These are specifically used to raise specific attributes of equipment and come from weapons and gear being dismantled with this diamond-like icon. The reason I put this stuff out there is the status effects for mods and weapon damage could be buffed through increasing attributes on your gear from these shards. So it's not really a bad idea to start stocking up on these now. All right, now that we're on the same page regarding some critical aspects of the game, let's get into what we are really here to talk about today. What we think are some of the best mods to look out for. Now, there are a ton we still don't know about, but these could potentially be some of the best ones out there. Especially when we get to see these tier three variants of some of these tier one and tier two mods. First up, we have what I think is going to be one of the most crucial mods to have for any squad to have when going up against the boss. The tier 1 mod, Vulnerability Bullets. Shots from a weapon with this mod will inflict vulnerable on enemies with a cooldown of 8 seconds. Through some testing, we found out vulnerable applies roughly a 25% damage amp against targets for 4 seconds. Now, even at tier 1, you can see how this can be just insane. Especially if you run it on a sidearm or second primary that isn't your DPSing weapon. Simply apply Vulnerable, swap weapons, and go to town. If two players have this mod in a squad, you could theoretically have this up at all times as long as the boss can't become resistant to this debuff and you manage to stagger the procs. Now, if later tiers of this mod simply lower the cooldown between procs, this mod's going to be insane, so keep an eye on this one. The next mod I actually came across on a purple rifle that was in rotation on the store, a tier 2 mod called Brain Eater, and simply put, this thing is nuts, and quite frankly, breaks any weapon for any player who can keep their weapon trained on the critical spot of an enemy. This mod makes it so when you are landing critical shots, you just don't consume ammo. If that doesn't sound absolutely broken already, it also has a no cooldown period. 
This mod makes something like the rifle it's on never have to reload, mean that high damage is taken advantage of, while the low ammo reserves and mag size that usually hurt the rifle archetype, it's completely negated. Combine this with the special round abilities like blighted rounds or twisted rounds, and you essentially can keep these bad boys up way longer than if you use them normally. I personally can't even imagine what a tier three version of this looks like, but I'm damn excited to find out. Another mod I think is actually going to be a bit of a sleeper is the tier one mod Soul Devourer, where killing shots regenerate 62 points of health. Now, the key of course here is making sure your shots are the one to kill things, not your abilities or dot effects. But if you can manage that while being in the thick of things, this effect can pretty much keep you at full health. Slap this on something like an SMG, shotgun, or assault rifle, and dive in head first. I can imagine the tier three version of this mod granting you even more health or maybe even shields or something crazy. But regardless, it's one to keep an eye on if used correctly. The flip side to this mod could be in the form of the tier one mod Killer Medic, where killing shots replenish 62 points of health to allies within a five meter radius of the target. Now see, the caveat here is that if you want your whole squad to take advantage of this, you all need to be jumping on clusters of mobs together. Get even a little separated and you'll find yourself not getting healed by this mod. Now we think this could be potent if used this way, or simply on a long range sniper targeting enemies around your tanky class up in the enemy's business. Keep an eye on this one and what the tier three variant could bring. Now this whole last section of mods are all from legendaries in the game, which if you don't know the various methods to farm them efficiently, we have vids for each method to help break up your grind. They all work, it's just purely RNG and time, nothing else. The very first tier three mod I wanna talk about is Weakness Trap, found exclusively on Rarog's Gaze. Shots from this weapon will cause explosions that deal light damage and inflict weakness on enemies within a five meter radius around the target, which effectively reduces the attack of enemies by 25% when this mod procs around every three seconds. Now, while this may actually be wasted by being on a rifle like this, the potential to slap this mod on something like an assault rifle, SMG, or even LMG and be in the thick of things, rocking a class like the Devastator for instance, you'll be able to essentially reduce the enemies to just tickling you while you hold aggro. I think a potential for this mod is absolutely huge. Killing Spree is another incredible tier three mod found exclusively on the Amber Vault, allowing killing shots to increase your damage on that weapon by 30% for 30 seconds. It does deteriorate with time, but also stacks up to five kills. Now I've seen some YouTubers post on Twitter about this being amazing at chunking a boss, but that's really not its purpose. Sure, it can eventually ramp your gun up to nutty level of damage, but you need trash mobs to make this thing build up its damage. We see this more as a super effective mod to slay out on large groups of mobs. Now this is also the only mod we've seen so far that directly amps a weapon's damage through kills, making it pretty top tier being alone in that category for now. Now I'm eager to see what else will fight to claim that spot. While focusing on high tier damage mods, we still have two more to talk about that are powerful in their own corners. Judgment Enforcer is up first, and it's a tier three mod exclusively found on Torment and Agony. When firing a weapon equipped with this mod, your shots mark enemies. Now when you reload your weapon, every marked enemy will be instantly burst with five times your weapon's damage. If that sounds insane, it's because it is. It's literally the definition of spray and pray. Why focus on killing each individual enemy when you can spray across a room, turn your back, and walk away as everything dies? The potential doesn't stop there either. Take something like a high-level rifle during a potential boss DPS phase. Every time you reload, that's a nice chunk of damage additionally added. Now this mod just all around has a really high ceiling of potential to try on so many weapons come launch. The other monster tier three weapon that helps with keeping mobs under control is Ultimate Damage Link, found only on the Voodoo Matchmaker. Your shots will link up to three enemies and they will share 30% of all weapon damage dealt as well as 10% of all anomaly damage dealt. If you don't think this sounds extremely good, just fast forward to when our characters are fully leveled. Stats pumped extremely high and our full kit of anomaly powers at our disposal. Something like the Pyromancer is going to be dishing out so much shared damage through burn effects being linked, and that is almost too much to fathom. This mod just seems incredible, and I can't wait to see all the different anomaly and even AoE builds that take full advantage of this. The last two mods that I wanna talk about are less about damage and more about ad control and defense. First up, we have Winter Blast, a tier three mod found on the Iceberg Sniper Rifle. Simply landing a critical shot will create an icy blast that inflicts freeze on enemies within a four meter radius. 
Now, I don't think a rifle is the place to personally use this mod. Because while they want to be hitting crits all day, this would be better used on something that sprays bullets at heads to keep a whole field of enemies locked down pretty consistently. This might be a staple for any solid control-based build in the future. And last, but certainly not least, is Golem Rising, a tier 3 mod found on the frankly beautiful Golem's Limb Pump Shotgun. This mod grants you the protective Golem effect, giving you 65 damage resistance for 3 seconds. Now this mod is really special, and I think has the potential to be incredibly busted on any class focused on tanking. The Devastator immediately comes to mind because of the effect being one of its abilities, but this could be great on any other class that has tank variants. Now the reason I think this is pretty busted is it doesn't really have a cooldown and essentially lets your Devastator class wield four abilities at a time instead of the typical three. Having access to your Golem armor with basically no cooldown and letting you slot a utility or damage ability instead just ups the Devastator's power curve with this, and it's already an absolute monster on the field. Plus, like every mod in the game, it doesn't have to go on a shotgun. Put this on whatever works for you to keep face tanking. Now remember everyone, this is just an expanded look at the modding system, but also our take on the extremely limited options of mods we currently have available. Once Outriders is released and the crafting and modding systems are fully accessible, there will be a lot more to consider. Well over 350 plus mods to consider and a metric ton of loot to go through. Finding the right mods to really make your weapons and overall builds wreak absolute havoc on the battlefield will be key, and knowing which ones to really tinker with versus trash will save you time. These were by no means the end all be all, but rest assured we'll be covering it all in depth in future videos. So now that you know our thoughts, what mods were the highlight of the demo for you? Do you agree with our thoughts, or are there ones that you have an interesting take on? We'd love to know your thoughts on everything. Share them in the comment section below. And while you're down there, consider hitting that thumbs up and of course subscribing to the channel. It's completely free to you and really does help us out a ton. You can also join us on Discord. We have a great community of around 6,000 members with a special section dedicated to Outriders. So if you're looking for people to team up with or just want to share some tips and tricks, check out the link below and join up today. My name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.